Hello everyone, now let us discuss about mock questions from Anatomy of Digestive System Part 4. Coming to the first question, the anatomical location where esophagus pierces the diaphragm. Esophagus, it cuts through the diaphragm and the anatomical location is called as esophageal hiatus. Next question, esophagus is also called as, it is also called as foot pipe. We know that Trachea is called as windpipe, larynx is called as throat and chest is called as thorax. Whereas esophagus is called as footpipe. The superficial layer of esophagus. We know that in the GI tract there are mainly four layers. Mucosa, submucosa, muscularis and sclerosa. That is the general pattern. But esophagus it is different. If you see this, the superficial layer of the esophagus is called as adventia. Then it is followed by muscularis, submucosa and mucosa. So the superficial layer of the esophagus is known as adventia. This is important. Generally in the rest of the digestive system tract, GI tract, it is sclerosa. Sclerosa is a superficial layer. But in esophagus, the superficial layer of the esophagus is known as adventia. Next question, the lower esophageal splinter is also called as, it is also called as cardiac splinter or, or an gastroesophageal splinter. Whether it is cardiac splinter or gastroesophageal splinter, they indicate lower esophageal splinter. The esophagus mainly has two splinters. Each end of the esophagus, at each end of the esophagus, the muscularis becomes slightly more prominent and forms two splinters. The upper esophageal splinter, UES, which consists of skeletal muscle. The upper esophageal splinter consists of skeletal muscles. And the next is lower esophageal splinter. It is also called as, you can see in the bracket, it indicates cardiac. And it is also called as gastroesophageal splinter also. The lower esophageal splinter, it consists of smooth muscle and it is nearer to heart. Hence, it is called as cardiac splinter. And the upper esophageal splinter regulates the movement of foot from the pharynx into esophagus. Whereas the lower esophageal splinter regulates the movement of foot from the esophagus into stomach. Hence, the term gastroesophageal splinter because it regulates the movement of food from esophagus into the stomach it is also called as gastroesophageal splinter so the lower esophageal splinter is also called as both cardiac splinter and gastroesophageal splinter so the correct answer is option c both a and b next question how many anatomical regions are present in the stomach the stomach mainly has four anatomical regions, cardia, fundus, body and pyloric part. The pyloric part is again divided into subparts, which is not part of the stomach. Which part is not the part of the stomach? The options are cardia, fundus, pyloric antrum and adventia. We know that adventia is the superficial layer of the esophagus. Hence, it is not the part of stomach. It is not a part of stomach. And the stomach is mainly composed of four parts. Here you can see this is cardia. And next is fundus. This is fundus. This is cardia. And this part is the body. And finally, this is the pyloric part. Which is composed of pyloric antrum, pyloric canal and pylorus. The pyloric part is composed of pyloric antrum, pyloric canal and pylorus. Which is not a part of small intestine. Among the options, which is not a part of small intestine. The options are duodenum, jejunum and ileum. Finally, the colon. Colon is a part of large intestine. Hence, the option is D. Small intestine is made up of three parts. Duodenum. Jejunum and ileum. This is duodenum, this is jejunum, and this is ileum. The three anatomical regions of small intestine are 
duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. And colon is not a part of small intestine. Hence, the option is option D, colon. Which is the longest region of the small intestine? Ileum. Ileum is the longest region of the small intestine. So, option C is correct option. Next question, which is the smallest region of the small intestine? Duodenum is the first and the smallest region of the small intestine. Duodenum is the starting or the first part or and the smallest part of the small intestine. Coming to next question, which part of the body produces bile? We know that bile is produced by liver. One of the functions of liver is production of bile. Here you can see liver and liver is mainly composed of two lobes. Principal lobes are left lobe and right lobe. The liver is divided into two lobes by the falciform uh, ligament. This is the falciform ligament. This is diaphragm. These are the left and the right lobes of the liver. And liver is the part of the body which produces bile. Coming to next question, which part of the body stores the bile? We know that liver produces the bile. And the part of the body that stores the bile is gallbladder. Here you can see the green sac-like structure is the gallbladder. It is composed of neck, body and fundus. Fundus is also a part of gallbladder. One of the part of the gallbladder is also called as fund fundus. So gallbladder is the part of the body that stores the bile. Liver produces the bile and gallbladder stores the bile. Which is not a part of large intestine. So which is not a part of large intestine. The major regions of the large intestine are cecum, colon, rectum and anal canal. The major regions of the large intestine are cecum, colon, rectum and anal canal. So fundus is not a part of large intestine. Fundus is a part of stomach. And one of the part of gallbladder is also called as fundus. Next question. Appendix which is also called as vermiform appendix is attached to which part of the large intestine? Appendix is attached to which part of the large intestine? The answer is cecum. If you see the diagram, this is the vermiform appendix and this is cecum. So, appendix is attached to cecum of the large intestine. Which part of the colon are retroperitoneal? Which parts of the colon are retroperitoneal? Colon is composed of four parts. The open end of the cecum merges with a long tube called as colon, which is divided into ascending colon, transverse colon. This is Here you can see this is the ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon and finally S-shaped sigmoid colon. There are four parts of colon, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon and sigmoid colon. Both ascending and descending colon are retroperitoneal. Both ascending and descending colons are retroperitoneal, whereas transverse colon and sigmoid colon are not. So, which parts of the colon are retroperitoneal? Answer is ascending and descending colon. So, the correct option is option C, both A and B. Ascending colon and descending colon are considered as retroperitoneal. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for further videos on medical coding and CPC training.